So this is a brief tutorial on how to build a conductive heat loss model. Remember we're only concerned with conduction and in this particular model we're going to ignore uh, the slab or the basement or anything that's conducting to the to the ground. We're going to just ignore that. Remember it's just an exercise. So this is like your homework assignment um, but uh, I've chosen some different dimensions so that at least uh, I'm not doing your homework for you in front of you. So I'm giving us some different givens and I'm setting this up in a spreadsheet so you can see see how that works. So um, the uh, number of heating degree days you were given a certain number I've chosen a certain other number um, and you can see again I've laid out my spreadsheet with the units and then the quantity and the label. So we know we have 20 windows uh, so that, that the, the, the unit is count and um, and the U factor which you were given was 0.3. Doors, we have two doors in this case, the account of two doors and a U factor of 0.2. Um, so in this particular instance it's a different house from the ones I'm asking you to model in the homework so um, it's 40 feet long and 25 feet wide um, and and we already know that the height of one story is eight feet so that means the perimeter is is going sorry the perimeter is going to be in linear feet um, so we want want to have a perimeter um, and that's easily figured out so there's our first equation is length plus width times two so it's it's some sort of a rectangle. Obviously, uh, the more complicated uh, building, you'd, you'd have to figure out a different way to find the perimeter. But generally speaking, if you have the perimeter and you have the height of one floor, well, now I've also got the number of stories. So each floor is going to be eight feet high. We've got two stories. That means the full wall area, then, is going to be the perimeter times the height of one story times the number of stories. And you can visualize how that how that would look, um, right? We're, we're, we're going around the house once and we're going up one floor and then we're going up a second floor and now we've got the wall area. Now the framing factor is something that's given. So in this case, it's 25%. So if we want to know the floor area, we can calculate the, the floor area um, by uh, the length times the width, that's the area, and then the number of stories because there are two floors, so each floor has, has the same area, so the total area uh, is, is 2,000 um, in this particular case. So the first thing we have to do is make sure that we know all of the areas. So down here I've set up the components of this uh, building. So we have clear wall, that's the part without framing, we have windows, we have doors, we have framing, and then we have the ceiling. And of course, we're ignoring the basement, and that's just the way it is. Now, the way I've set this spreadsheet up, and there are lots of ways to do it, is I've set it up with the number. So the clear wall has 75% of the wall area. Now, of course, that's minus the windows and doors, and we'll get to that in a minute. And then the windows, they're 20, and the doors are 2. And you'll notice here I've actually made a reference to the count. And that way, if I were to say, actually, you know what, let's say that there are three doors, then we get three doors and everything recalculates. Um, so, uh, and then the framing section, we already know is 25%, and here it is, it's referring to the framing factor. And here with the clear wall, what I did is one minus the framing factor, and that gets me to the amount that's not framing. So. Then I say, what's a single unit area? So in the case of the clear wall, um, uh, if, if, you, if you don't do anything to it, and this includes, in fact, not paying attention to whether there are windows and doors there. That's the, the wall area, the full wall area that we already calculated. I'm putting it there. But of course, we do have to consider the windows and the doors and the framing. So what we do is we create a formula that you can see takes the single unit area, the full the full wall, minus so that's 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 m15. So that minus the doors minus the windows. That new number that's inside parentheses parentheses times 
the framing factor, which is the portion of that area of the wall without any framing in it. That's the one we're interested in for this particular line as we go across this way. So now we need the U factor for that. Um, so I'm going to skip, I'm going to get to that in a minute, and we'll go back, back through how the same formula w works for the windows. So we have 20 windows, each one's 10 uh, square feet. Um, I think that was a given in the homework, and, and I'm using it again. Um, and so now we have the area, which is the product of the number of windows and the area of the windows. Um, doors are the same. Uh, the framing factor then, or the framing, uses the framing factor times the single unit area. Notice that it is exactly the same as a clear wall single unit area, but it's multiplied times 0.25, and of course it's actually the, the full wall area minus the windows and the doors, and then minus, uh, and, and then, sorry, minus that full wall area minus the, the windows and the doors times the framing factor. So times the percentage that's actually framing and not insulation. And for the ceiling, in this case, uh, the ceiling is going to be the same as, uh, as, as the floor area. It's going to be the length times the width. Um, so now we have the areas for all of our components. Because remember, our equation that we're going to try to be building is going to be Q equals UA times delta t. And we're using a special version of that, which is q equals ua times the number of heating degree days times 24 hours, which gets us from uh, days to hours, um, because the u factor is, is measured in hours. So th those, that's the important equation that we're trying to get to. So now we have to fit, we've got the areas, so we've, we've got, the, out, of, out of the stuff to find Q, we have A, we have the area, okay? And we already have the heating degree days, because that's given, and 24 is 24. Um, it's not a very complex equation. So now we have to find the R value for each of these components. Now some of them were given. So the windows and the doors, we were given a U factor of 0.3. Um, and in fact, if I were really cl clever, instead of making it 0.3, I would actually simply refer to that factor. Now why is that clever? Because let's say I wanted to say, well, what would it be if I had a more efficient window? Let's say it was point, a, re a, a re really pretty efficient window. Well you know, that would change things, and so we can mess, mess with things later. Um, you can see how this, this would be a powerful tool. So to find the R value for that, we actually don't need it for this equation, but it's handy to have it all you know, nice to look at. The R value is 1 over the U factor. That's the definition of the R value. It's the inverse of the U factor. It's its resistance to conductivity, and U factor indicates its conductivity. So a, a door... Uh, that's a, a 0.2 u factor, and again here I would be smart to pick a, pick the door that way. Uh, we get the r value. Now for the th the things where we've been given the r value, we have to go the other direction, and so that means we have to calculate them. And this is where that other portion comes in, where we have the different uh, the the different layers in these walls, because the 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 walls are mainly the things for which we've been given uh, R values. So I guess here we've got a simpler version. With the ceiling, we were given R48, so that's a given. And, um, and we, uh, to find the U factor, we do 1 over the R value. Not, not very surprising. And in fact, here's another one where we could, uh, we could make things clever by saying ceiling and then we could have the we could actually have the area um, and we could calculate it by the length times the width and then instead of uh, I guess we well we figured it out a different way before but uh, it doesn't matter how we got it but even here we can put um, a uh, 48 and we'll call that our value. 
and that may not be the, the most elegant way to put it, but, but at least there we've got the ceiling with its R value. And then instead of taking 48, we should refer to that one. Well, why is that? Because now let's say we decided we wanted to make it an R60 ceiling instead. Um, now we could see what, how that would perform. Um, so, uh, to calculate the R values for the things that are not given or that are given in layers, we have to calculate what are the, the all, all these layers. And we've been given the inside air film is 0.68 for all of these. The drywall is the same. The OSB sheathing is the same. The foam board is something that is possible that we could we could add some foam board. Uh, the siding is uh, is the same, and the outside air film are the same. Um, for the insulation, in this case, I've decided that this house is, is an older house and it's framed wet with uh, a two by four studs. So the thickness of that cavity is three and a half inches, and you can see here it's the thickness. So, and the R value per inch of most fibrous insulations is somewhere around 3.5, so we'll use that. And the R value per inch of wood is somewhere around 1.25. So for the, the R value for the clear wall, the section that's got insulation in it, we now take the R value per inch times the number of inches, and we calculate an R value. And for the framing, we take the R value per inch times the number of inches, and we calculate an R value. And now we simply add these things up. The sum of all of those uh, layers, all those sandwich layers in, in, the, in the wall are going to be the R value for that portion of the wall. So this is for the clear wall, and here's for the R value for the framing. And you can, and we, we've summed that as well. To calculate the total wall R value, though, we have to do an area-weighted uh, U-factor calculation. And so I've captured this all inside this same equation. So let's break the equation down. First, we're taking 1 over uh, the R value for the, for the insulated, the, cl the clear wall section, and we're multiplying that times the portion of the wall that it is, which is 1 minus the framing factor. So it's everything except the framing. And we multiply those, that's the first area, and then we want to add to that the proportion, the U factor times the area for the proportion that is framing. So we take 1 over the, um, the, the R value for the framing times the framing factor, which is here in green, and then we put that all inside parentheses, so that's all one, one factor that we're interested in, and we divide that into 1. We take its inverse, and that gets us um, and so, because for without dividing it into one, we just have the U A, the U times times the area, of, and we want the the total wall R value, um, just for fun. Um, although for our purposes, we're actually leaving that undone, right? Because we we're calculating the total wall U A later. Um, but this way, you can kind of check and see does it make sense that I have a total wall R value.